Demolition might seem like a destructive process, but it's a crucial part of urban development and renewal. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Civil Mentors. In today's episode, we'll discuss the primary reasons for building demolition, examine the methods used, and explore how this process contributes to the growth and sustainability of our cities. So without further delay, let's get started. One of the primary reasons buildings are demolished is due to structural damage. Over time, structures can experience various forms of damage, such as settling, cracking, and deformation. In some cases, the damage is so severe that the building becomes unsafe for occupants. When repairs are no longer feasible or cost-effective, demolition becomes the only option to ensure public safety. For instance, the Grenfell Tower in London, a 24-story building, was severely damaged by a tragic fire in 2017 rendering it impossible to safely restore. As societies and technologies progress, building designs that were once cutting edge can become outdated or obsolete. Some buildings may no longer adhere to modern safety or accessibility standards, while others might not offer the efficiency or functionality required by today's users. In such cases, demolition creates space for new, more efficient structures that better serve the community's needs. A prime example is the demolition of the old Penn Station in New York City during the 1960s, which made way for the construction of the current Madison Square Garden and a modernized transportation hub. Economic factors can also drive the decision to demolish a building. As land values increase over time, it can become more profitable to replace an existing structure with a new development that generates higher revenue. Additionally, the cost of maintaining an aging building can outweigh the benefits, leading property owners to opt for demolition and redevelopment. Take the 2017 demolition of the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, for example. This made way for the construction of the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, a state-of-the-art venue with increased seating capacity and revenue-generating potential. Demolition is vital to urban renewal and redevelopment efforts. As cities grow and change, the need for new infrastructure, housing, and commercial spaces increases. Demolishing old, underutilized buildings can create space for new developments that better meet the community's needs and support economic growth. The ongoing redevelopment of Detroit, Michigan, involves the demolition of numerous abandoned buildings to make way for new housing, businesses, and public spaces. Environmental concerns can lead to building demolition as well. Some older structures may contain hazardous materials like asbestos or lead, which can pose health risks if not properly managed. Demolishing these buildings and replacing them with environmentally friendly structures can help reduce negative impacts on human health and the environment. For example, the demolition of the Hunters Point power plant in San Francisco eliminated a major source of environmental pollution and made way for a mixed-use development, including housing and parkland. As cities expand, there is often a need to improve infrastructure such as roads, bridges, and public transit systems. Sometimes existing buildings must be demolished to make way for these essential projects, which can improve transportation, accessibility, and overall quality of life for residents. In the case of the Big Dig project in Boston, the demolition of buildings allowed for the construction of the Central Artery Tunnel project, which greatly improved traffic flow and reduced congestion in the city. Natural disasters such as earthquakes, hurricanes, and floods can cause significant damage to buildings, rendering them unsafe or beyond repair. In these situations, demolition may be necessary to clear the way for reconstruction efforts, restoring communities and ensuring the safety of their residents. The 2011 earthquake and tsunami in Japan led to the demolition of countless damaged buildings, enabling the reconstruction of safer, more resilient structures in their place. In some instances, demolition is part of a larger effort to preserve and protect historical buildings. Selective demolition, also known as deconstruction, can be used to carefully remove deteriorated or non-historic elements of a structure, allowing for the preservation and adaptive reuse of its historically significant components. Now that we've explored the main reasons why buildings are demolished, let's briefly examine some common demolition techniques. Implosion. This controlled demolition method involves using explosives to collapse a building in on itself. It's often used for large structures, such as high-rise buildings and bridges. Wrecking Ball 
A heavy steel ball, often weighing several tons, is swung or dropped onto a structure to break it apart. This method is less precise than implosion but can be effective for smaller buildings. Hydraulic Excavator These large machines equipped with specialized attachments can dismantle structures piece by piece, making them ideal for selective demolition and deconstruction projects. High Reach Demolition In this method, a hydraulic excavator with an extended arm is used to dismantle a building from the top down, minimizing disruption to the surrounding area. Buildings are demolished for a variety of reasons, including structural damage, outdated designs, economic factors, and urban renewal efforts. By understanding the reasons behind demolition and the techniques used, we can appreciate the role this process plays in shaping the built environment and creating more sustainable, livable cities. And that's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you found it informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more informative content. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Until next time, peace out.